Have you been wanting to lose weight and get healthy? Now's the perfect time to start Nutrisystem. Enjoy your favorite foods made healthier, delivered free to your door. Right now, you can get Uniquely Yours Ultimate, our most complete foolproof plan at an amazing price. Order today and save 50%, plus get an extra $40 off. Go to Nutrisystem.com slash save and discover what millions of people already know. Nutrisystem works. Limitations apply. See website for full offer details. One in four women and one in six men are survivors of sexual abuse or assault. That means you or someone you know has survived an external and internal battle for your soul, which most often no one else will ever see unless you tell your story. This is Journey On, Survivors Healing from Sexual Abuse and Assault. My name is DJ Burr and I'm a survivor. I was molested at 16 years old and raped at 18. I didn't know what surviving looked like back then, but I do now. Join me as I talk with survivors and hear their experience, strength, and hope on the road to recovery. Hear our stories and share your own. You are not alone. Welcome to another episode of Journey On. I'm DJ Burr, and I wanted to thank you for joining me for another exciting episode. Today, I am speaking with a colleague and friend of mine. Her name is Liz. Liz, welcome to the show. Hi, DJ. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, You know, we met uh, over the summer, and I just had a fantastic time getting to to know you, and I'm so grateful that you've decided to to come on my show, Journey On, to tell your survivor story. It was uh, surprising to me to receive your message, but I'm grateful that you chose me as kind of like an outlet to, to express your desire to share your story. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Can you tell our audience where you're located? Uh, yes, I live in Greenville, South Carolina. Excellent. Okay. Well, Liz, you know, here on Journey On, we talk about our experience, strength, and hope as it's related to recovering from sexual abuse and assault. And so I want to give you the floor and let you tell our audience uh, what you wanted to share. Okay, sure. Um, Well, I think sort of what started me wanting to share was the the Me Too um, on on Instagram and other social media outlets. And uh, I do have my own therapist who I go to and talk to about my past and current anxiety. And um, she you know, was supportive of me uh, talking about it and excited for me. And uh, I just felt like it was a good time. So, um, and another reason I wanted to share was because um, sometimes people, I think, feel like there's a scale of like, well, I've, I've been hurt or abused, but it was only one time or, you know, um, there are other people who have had such worse experiences and, and mine doesn't really count or, you know, and I, and I wanted, because I've felt that way sometimes. Um, and so I just wanted to open up some dialogue about that because I I know from talking to other women and other men that um, that a lot of times people don't talk about it um, especially if it is um, maybe like within a relationship that's so, true that is very um, true yeah so yeah, when I was in, in high school, I um, uh, was dating someone, and he sort of had the bad boy reputation, and I was um, the the little uh, saint, no, <laughs> <laughs> going to church all the time and um, wanting to, to wait until I was married um, to have sex, and um, we met in, in a class in, at, in high school and, 
I was the the helper type, um, which makes sense going into the counseling field. And uh, so I thought, you know, I could could fix him and help him and heal him and all of these different things. And so um, so we started dating. And uh, then um, we had a chance to be alone when his parents were gone. Um, and we just like drank a little bit of wine and, um, we ended up going upstairs and I just, I wasn't ready, but I didn't, you know, I was afraid. I, I, I thought, well, he knows what's best for me. Um, I guess I trusted him so much, and I was like, well, you know, I just didn't want to to say no and to um, to cause any sort of rift between us. And, you know, I didn't want conflict. And so, you know, we we started to have sex and it was very painful. And, and, th- and then I did say no, you know, I said no, no. Um, but he didn't stop. And um, so that was that was really difficult because I lost a part of my identity um, because I had wanted to, to, uh, to remain a virgin. And, um, and so it was, it was definitely a hard time and it happened. I I can think of at least one other time um, early on in our relationship. Um, and so my current work with my counselor has been about, um, finding my voice and, um, sticking up for myself and feeling comfortable sharing my opinions. Um, and so that's, that's sort of it in a nutshell. Wow. It must have been a really scary time for you, especially knowing that what your values were and, and also when you said no, right? And he didn't listen. Right. So I'm curious after that, after that incident happened, were you able to turn to anyone for help right after? Well, so I, um, I didn't feel comfortable telling my friends or my, my family. And, uh, so, um, so we continued to date and, uh, it was a a interesting dynamic, but, um, you know, Yeah, I, yeah, I, um, I remember one time crying in the shower and my mom heard me and and she was worried about me. She said, oh, I thought something happened to you at school today or something that, that someone had hurt you. And I said, no, you know, I, um, it was, I almost didn't. I guess I felt ashamed about it or I just, I'm not sure, but I didn't really even think about, about sharing it. I think a lot of people have that experience. Uh, The shame, um, I can relate to the shame and being overwhelmed by it and then not knowing what to say or do. And so I, Mm -hmm. I, I think that makes sense. And I think our listeners could understand you know, not being able to say anything in that moment. 
When did you start mm -hmm. talking about it? Um, well, like, to who? <laughs> well, to friends or family. Did you make a, a police report? Was it anything official like that? Right. No, there was no r report. Um, we continued to date and, you know, we tried to work through things in our relationship. And uh, we actually dated for a long time. I mean, for almost two years um, after that. And uh, um, I'm, I'm a big proponent of forgiveness. And so um, we were able to, to heal in a lot of ways. Um, but ultimately I decided to end that relationship and, uh, um, and so I, yeah, it was something that I didn't talk about for a long time. Um, did you and he ever have a conversation about it? I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't remember having a, a serious conversation about it. A couple months later, um, it was actually when September 11th happened, He, I found out that he had cheated on me. Oh, man. And and so I think I just got so caught up in that, that, you know, that sort of where all my, my pain went to. And, uh, and I did get help from my pastor and, and different people. And, um, so. And that was to help you uh, heal from the you know, him stepping out of the relationship and causing harm in that way. Is that correct? Right. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I could see that, you know, um, it, it sounds like it might've been easier to have that conversation. And right. I, I know talking about abuse and surviving abuse is so hard for so many of us, but I am so thankful when people do come forward and share their stories and say me too, because it is just, it just opens up the discussion even further. And I think that's mm -hmm. what you've done here today is just to say, me too, I understand. Right? Right. It yeah. happens. Yeah. It happens. You know, it doesn't matter what socioeconomic status you come from. It doesn't matter you right. know, race. It doesn't matter country. I mean, I have talked to people from all over the world who have had similar experiences. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can you talk a little and bit? It, oh, go ahead. Oh, it's fine. Well, I was going to ask if you would mind talking a little bit about what it's like now for you in relationship, um, having this be a part of your, your story. Sure. Yeah. So, um, it, it is difficult. I, I, <clears throat> I have, when I decided to go to graduate school and become a counselor, um, I was required to go to my own counseling and I had been before a little bit, but, um, I decided to talk to my counselor at Clemson about what had happened and she sort of specialized in domestic abuse and, and different, you know, that those situations and and so she helped me work through a lot. but it it is difficult uh in relationships and getting people to understand uh that uh, there are occasionally times when I will um like back off or or just have to stop or something when be you know in an intimate situation and so 
but also, I mean, the flip side of that is sometimes people are too, think that I'm too fragile and, you know, are afraid to, um, to know what to do. So, so it definitely affects, um, my relationships, um, yeah, what I'm hearing is uh, the need for boundaries and communication. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's uh, what has come out the most in the Me Too uh, conversations of late is that there were a lack of boundaries and a lack of communication. And then when we want to communicate boundaries, um, some people are standoffish, they're rude, they don't understand. And so what we really need is just to have a non-threatening conversation about intimacy and the types of intimacy. Mm -hmm. And I, my hope is that that's where we're headed, right? I think mm -hmm. a lot of people yeah. are coming forward and saying, this is my truth. This is what happened to me. And, and I also, and I think that's amazing because so many people are coming forward. But I think what we have to do next is to start to have that next level communication of, these are my boundaries and I want to know, can you respect them? Right. Right. And for, Definitely. and for a lot of people, you know, we all have boundaries and some of those are not stated. Like it's not appropriate to touch someone without consent. Right. Mm -hmm. And I have to teach people that in my practice. And I imagine that you'll be having those types of conversations with your clients too. And it's just that a right. lot of people just don't know. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty scary. Mm, I know. Yes. Yes, it is. You know, like you said, I, I guess growing up in different situations or in a, in a house maybe where there's not a lot of privacy, um, I can see how those, those lines could get crossed or, um, you know, um, not being... As, you know, educated about um, what is inappropriate, and and all those things are important. Yeah, and also what's appropriate. Um, mm -hmm. You know, um, but I my hope is that by doing this podcast, by talking to survivors like yourself, we can have those conversations. And I invite people to to start having that dialogue as early as you can with little kids. You know, I just recently was asked to do a PSA for the Me Too campaign, and I'm not sure when that's going to be coming out. But one of the things that mm -hmm. I said in that campaign is that we got to start having these conversations when these kids are in school, right? Like, right. like elementary. Yeah. We can't have this conversation at college after, you know, someone has been hurt or they've been harmed themselves. You know, exactly. it's too late then. Mm-hmm. So I think yeah. by by talking today, uh, we're helping move that conversation along. Is there anything that you would offer as a, a as like a you know an encouragement to to listeners? Something that you might have heard along the way that uh, helped you find peace in all the chaos. Well, I've become really interested in meditation and yoga, and. Uh, it's really helping me with the, the mind body connection. And, um, be, because it was suppressed for so long and I didn't really pay attention to it. I didn't realize, um, that I had, you know, some PTSD type symptoms and I would like, if people would talk about abuse, you know, I would feel tightness in my chest you know, I would feel, you know, like uncomfortable in my genitals or need to go to the bathroom. And so being able to, to recognize that and to be able to use, uh, yoga and, and, uh, and breathing, um, is, is really beneficial and, and can minimize those, those reactions. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great idea. 
you know, yoga and meditation have always been helpful for me. I wish I could do the yoga more consistently, but I'm just not that flexible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I you work on it. You have to find a good place. Right. You have to mm -hmm. find a good place. And, and, and for those people who, who, who do those things, I would say do that with like a class or, um, you know, a one-on-one. -on -one. I, I remember doing a yoga class for survivors, like that was part of the work. It was like anyone oh, who was awesome. in that class was also uh, could identify with uh, child sexual abuse or abuse and assault in adulthood. And so I felt really safe in that environment. And so that might mm -hmm. be something that's offered to our guests, uh, to our, um, our listeners in their, in, in their community. So I would offer for you guys to, to check that out and, and see if there's something out there that works for you. Well, Definitely, Liz, yeah. thank you so much for taking the time for to share your story today. It, it 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 moves me that you were able to reach out to me and ask me to help you tell tell your story, and I'm I'll be forever grateful for that opportunity. And I hope that you continue to heal and live a life worth living beyond a tragic past. Yes, thank you. I do. I feel like I'm on a very a healthy path and and just focusing on the present moment and focusing on um, being joyful and happy. I am so glad to hear that. Well, thanks so much, Liz, for joining us on Journey On, and you have a fantastic evening. Okay. Thanks, DJ. Thank you for joining me for this awe-inspiring episode of Journey On. I invite you to get in touch with me if you want to share your story. You can find me on Facebook and Twitter at DJBurr1022 and on Instagram at TheDJBurr. Survivors are also welcome to join our private Facebook group, Journey On Survivors, at www.facebook.com slash groups slash Journey On Survivors. And finally, the opinions expressed here are strictly those of the person sharing them. Take what you like and leave the rest. I encourage survivors to share their stories authentically, and I believe every guest on my show has. I value the strength and courage it takes to publicly share our recovery journeys. Please respect yourselves and each other. Till next time, breathe deep and journey on. Rule the day the plant-based way with the new vegan mixed berry from Smoothie King. Powered by whole, non-GMO fruits, oat milk, and vegan protein, it's a dairy-free, plant-based smoothie you can feel great about. With 13 grams of protein and half your daily fiber, it's an easy way to get the essential nutrients your body craves. Skip the line and order online for pickup or delivery. Smoothie King. Rule the day. Regina King for Cadillac Escalade. Let's say you make it to the top. What's next? Relish in the glory of your accomplishments? Okay, sure, for a minute. But then you move forward. Take the 2021 Escalade. Cadillac's newest arrival is more than just a celebration of iconic luxury. It's the most technologically advanced Escalade ever. Because arriving is just the beginning. The 2021 Cadillac Escalade. Never stop arriving.